feel like sometimes your luck and your winning all goes hand in hand. Like you've had kind of unusual good luck lately. It seems like what you did in your basketball league, stuff like that. So is this all right together? Yeah, like have you had a good start at the tables, things like that? Mm -hmm. Is this are you in a good vibe right now? Yeah, I mean certainly I you know was a little worried going into the playoffs, certainly with uh, as few of playoff points as I've had in quite some time. And then certainly the schedule uh, wasn't fitting for myself or the team, uh, but we got through it, right? And so now I just feel like, um, you know, we got a great opportunity to go win one of the next three races and, and then fight forward in Phoenix. So, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I really truly believe in, you know, odds and big sample sizes and, and it was going so bad for so long there in the summer that you just got to think that eventually this stuff just works itself out in the end. Um, you know, it's you play enough hands of blackjack, you're only at a 2% deficit, but if you only play 20 hands, you could lose all of them. So, you know what I mean? So it, you got to, you got to just be patient and go through those swings at times. Go next to Bob. Uh, our response for is um, NASCAR says they're preparing to have 32 charter teams next year. So they haven't been specific yet on the charter team supposed to get from Stuart Haas. So I'm curious, have you been told anything about the approval for that transfer or any deadlines as far as No, no deadlines that I'm aware of. Um, and no, we, we haven't spoke to him about it. Uh, I think that's more of a conversation. Spencer Series 6 and Nancy Radio, catchments.com. You beat yourself up pretty good about your road course prowess and basically kind of is calling it you can't keep teaching old dog new tricks, right? Um, would you advocate seeing more intermediate tracks in the future on the schedule or are you just going to kind of take your medicine in the time you have left in the Cup Series? Uh, it's a good question. I mean, it's something that we debate within the 11 team a lot is, you know, I mean, to take the next step, you know, how much effort would that take from myself and resources and things like that? And there's things you could do, um, but, you know, are you going to get enough return on that? Um, you know, the way the schedule sets up next year, if you're looking at it, it's, Okay, we're taking out this track. We're now putting in a couple more ovals in the in the playoffs. So I think it the schedule fits us a little bit better. So I think you almost, you know, I don't know that we've decided, but certainly it's a discussion we have in myself and Chris about, you know, what is our next steps on it because certainly it could have bitten us pretty good this year uh, the way the schedule laid out. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that. Uh, you know, I, I'm not opposed to the, the schedule the way it is in the sense of that I know it challenges drivers and challenges them in different types of uh, techniques, right? You got to be a more rounded driver um, nowadays than what you used to be able to, uh, used to have to be, um, you know, because road courses weren't such a big part of it. it, it road courses never have been in NASCAR's history a big part of their um, DNA, but it has, you know, worked its way in that direction um, over the last, you know, handful of years. So if that's a continuation, then I would say, yeah, you maybe want to add some more resources to getting better. But um, yeah, I just don't know what the return on that investment would be um, if I had to start over right now. And on the other side of that, you look at a track like Homestead, and you have just been amazingly fast there over the years. Last year was an anomaly, clearly because your shoulder, right? But um, is that a place where you and Gate Park kind of have circle because you know that you're badass fast there? Yeah, I mean, it's been good. You know, I still think that there's a, you know, one or two drivers that I think are a little better than what I am uh, at that racetrack and their techniques. Um, but I think that right situations, you know, I'm going to be right there in the top five with a great shot to win it if nothing changes. But, you know, I am working on, you know, you know how I can improve um, at all racetracks. But I just think that, uh, yeah, these three, you know, set up nicely for us. And there's no reason why we shouldn't compete in all three of them.
Uh, Jerry, Dustin, and then Holly. Jerry, you can keep them from that. Matt. Over the years, we've seen uh, you know drivers have a beef with each other, uh, and they end up in the truck the, the, together the next week. In your situation, you race for a championship. You can win this championship and be the champion representing NASCAR, who's also has a lawsuit against them in the charter situation. Have you given any thoughts to that dynamic and how awkward that might be? Or what the awkward thing? Yeah, I mean. I I would like to have that problem, truthfully. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, you know. I always say, you know, you, if you got an issue, um, you cross that bridge when you get there. And so, I, it's a problem I would love to have. Um, but you know, I, I would understand the responsibilities of a champion, and certainly knowing what I'm representing, and and I, I think I'd be a, able to do a good job of separating the two. Dustin. Denny, by most metrics, like this round of eight seems pretty deep. Um, how do you view the strength of these three teams? Yeah, I mean, you know, I mentioned on the podcast this week that I thought it was the strongest eight that we've had. And that's not, I, I kind of probably misspoke because it's not, you know, is it based off of talent, like all that stuff? I mean, it's, there's arguably been some, you know, eight Hall of Famers and in, in the playoffs, you know, before, but not saying there's not now, but I just think how equal the field is, you know, other than the five team that I, I, I kind of put, you know, a little step above the other seven, I think um, it's just wide open from that perspective. So I think it's the strong, you know, the most disparity we, we've had in those eight. So, um, man, it's, it's just who can, get off on the right foot, I think, these next couple weeks. Can you, can you have a bad race and be so much your way you that, that part will be difficult. I, I, I don't um, – if you, if you have a bad finish uh, at the very end after you've scored 20 stage points, I think you can probably get away with that. But um, an early exit from the race um, and then thinking you're going to get in on points – Given the racetracks, probably will be difficult to do. So certainly, yeah, I, I don't, I wouldn't plan on that being part of your point budget. We'll come up front to Holly. Hi, Denny. Holly King of the NASCAR Life Service. You've been in the playoffs for so many years. I mean, most of your career, you've been challenging for a championship. This year, with a lot going on, you know, well beyond your team. Do you kind of thrive in that? Do you, are you the person that likes to have a lot going on or do you really have to kind of focus in and say, you know, when I'm at home, I'm just doing this? I mean, do you, do you feel like you do better with so much going on or do you really have to kind of I, you know, I don't know if I do better, but it's just what I choose, right? I, I'm just, I, I'm a workaholic in every way, shape or form. So I just think that uh, it's, what I like to do. I like to um, set goals and then figure out the process to achieve those goals. So it's, it's self-inflicted in, in some instances, but others, you know, when things pile on, you've got this going on, that going on, and what have you, it's just, you just put up, you know, you put it in the tackle box and, and you know, it's, it's stored away in its own little section there. And when I have to address it, I, I I'll go back in there and I'll I'll open up that section of the tackle box and I'll 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 work on that problem. But um, I like to think that my tackle box is pretty deep, and and certainly uh, got a lot of storage in there. Uh, but uh, certainly, you know, even at my age, it's still you know something I I love to do. And you know, I there's not much I would like to eliminate from my daily life. And certainly, you know. As time goes on, there's there's always going to be things that pop up that you just don't plan for, uh, but it's you know how do you how do you react in those situations and how do you manage them? All right, we're a little tight on time, so we're going to try to get three more in. We're going to go to Kelly and then Chris and finish over here in the middle. Hmm. I guess I need to know more of the context of the question. So, retired, a couple of retired, now retired drivers, and 
drivers have had interesting conversations with me on the podcast about is that elite mindset all the time of what you're doing in this sport. Um, so you're talking more about mental health than physical health then. Um, yeah, I mean, I think for me, I think it's physical. Um, I know that I go through a cycle every single week where um, it's Tuesday before I can, like, walk straight. Like, it's just, you know, but that's, you know, chronic back issues that I've just had over time. And, um, you know, I've hit a lot of things. And, you know, cars ride rougher now than, than what they ever have because uh, it's faster to go that way. Um, so I think it's different for everyone. I mean, you see some young guys, you know, probably like Blaney, right? Doesn't feel a thing. He probably could go do whatever uh, tomorrow. Um, but it's just different for all of us. And, you know, for me, it certainly is more taxing on the physical side than it is the mental side. But probably others, it probably flip flops. And, you know, when it's when you consume yourself with it so much, um, it certainly can take its role on it. But there's other people that would race seven days a week if they could. So uh, it's just even though we're we're all human, it's it's amazing how different we all are. And then secondly, um, to piggyback off Dustin's question about this round of eight with the drivers, is Christopher is Christopher the guy that no one is giving enough attention to considering how good he's been through the first six races? Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, they kind of went through a rough patch um, during the course of the summer, similar to us, where they were just getting real bad finishes. They were crashing early in races. Um, but they, they'd always had kind of really good elite speed. Um, a lot of the metrics that, that I look at, you know, shows that uh, he's one of the fastest uh, when it comes to setting fast lap times and driver ratings, things like that. So, um, yeah, probably laying in the weeds is probably a good, good way to kind of summarize that, that 20 team and Christopher. Um, but I think some of it also is, you know, his personality, right? He's, he's not outspoken that much. He's pretty soft-spoken. And so t typically people like that always fly under the radar. Matt Kenseth is, you know, I, I consider them very, very similar when I think about how, who is Christopher. And, I kinda, and I've got to work with both of them. You know, I, 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 I feel like there's a lot of Matt Kenseth and Christopher both kind of with their personalities and with their talent level. All right, final two questions. We'll go to Chris and then in the middle over here. Chris, I'm getting chance to come. Danny, um, next year, uh, Ty is going to be listed as owner of the Pitfork Xfinity car with Taylor Gray. Just curious, you being an owner, how do you think you'll handle those responsibilities of being an Xfinity team owner and handling the ups and downs of the Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what his responsibilities will be. Um, I, you know, I'm sure I'll talk to uh, management uh, on Monday kind of and, and ask them some questions about it uh, but just as a outsider uh, but obviously this has always been probably a, a Joe Gibbs plan right is to hand this thing down to his family for uh, for all the generations and all the grandkids and whatnot so um, yeah I think it's just starting that process probably early and certainly I would think that as long as he's driving they'll probably still be you know more hands-on uh, but it certainly would be something that uh, you know would allow Ty to get immersed in the ownership side early. And a quick follow up: uh, you, you last one year in the fall race, not in uh, 2021, but that didn't get you into the, into the championship four. But this year, it would if you won. That something would get you into the championship four. How much pressure would be taken off your shoulders if you were able to accomplish that? Yeah, it it would be a big one for sure. Um, you know. It just you get a little bit extra time, you know, that you're not working on the next two racetracks. You're working on Phoenix instead. Um, so it just really would probably help the teams more than so more so than the driver. Uh, but the first race in the round of eight is always uh, one of the most important just because of the advantage that you could get. But I'm not really sure um, if stats would back that up that people that have won their way into the round of four right away. I, like I, I couldn't tell you how their result has ended up in the in the round of four because it is one race. Um, but uh, but yeah, it certainly would be awesome, and <laughs> I'd love to have it happen. We'll take our final question in the middle behind you, right there. Yep. Brian Twain, Best Works Media Group. Danny, you're probably familiar with the meme or gif of uh, MJ saying, and I took that personally. With everything that's going on off track right now between 2311 and front row and NASCAR, 
do you feel like you're extra motivated to get a win in this round and clinch a spot in the championship or and eventually hopefully win a championship? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of talked about it earlier that, uh, you know, it's a, a problem I would love to have is to, you know, lift it up that, you know, have Steve Phelps handing me that championship trophy in Phoenix. That would just be awesome, right? And, and you know, we've spoke personally about, and you know, that, and he said he'd, he'd be glad to do it. And so, uh, you know, certainly if I win the championship as a driver, I'm, I'm the driver of the 11, right? And I represent that team. Uh, there is another person that, is the owner of the 2311 cars. And so, um, again, it's, I, I can find a way to separate those two, but certainly I'm heavily, heavily motivated. Certainly, not only with all those outside factors going on, but just generally um, the exhale that we had after we got through the last round.